when we think about the future, we typically think it will be designed by people like this. I believe the next big thing will be crafted by people like that. Engineers. And not just because I am one of them. Let me share you why I believe engineering is going to be the next big thing, and these guys could even be the new hipsters. <laughs> so machines have always been great and done amazing things for us, but we are in the middle of a revolution. Machines are becoming intelligent. I'd like to think of machinery automation a little bit like our human body. We see with our eyes, that's sensing. We move with our hands and arms, that's actuation. And we process with our brains, I mean, most of the time, that's process control. Machines have classically been only like the actuation. Over the past 30 years, we added a lot of sensors and sensing to the machines, but still, machines are missing the key thing, and that is intelligence. And now, the fourth industrial revolution will bring that into life. Why do we call it fourth? First one was the steam machine, second one was linear assembly systems. People think about Henry Ford's Model T. Well, actually, they were first implemented in the slaughterhouses of Chicago. Sorry for no better news there. Third is the robots that entered our factories, and fourth is now the combination of physical products and the intelligence and data. All those elements, like autonomous robots, additive manufacturing technologies and big data analytics, they already exist today, so it's starting to happen. They are not full-blown yet, and they are not connected to each other. Once they are, it'll allow for new ways to produce, to design, for companies to operate, and it'll also change the way how we work and the role of labor. You might say, well, how does this all help us? Think about a helicopter stuck somewhere in a remote place in Africa. It's needed in a food delivery mission. The next mechanic is some 17 flight hours away. We want to have the chopper back in the air within two hours. Is this possible with Industry 4.0? We'll figure out in seven minutes. Let's first look at production, and let's look at a product we all like, food and beverage. That's a $600 billion industry constantly innovating in order to catch our attention. Now, I grew up in the Black Forest, so I love natural food, and I spent most, most days outside. And on top of the three meals provided in our home, I needed some extra calories. So I used to have those yogurts, 500 milliliters a glass. They came in four flavors. On a very good day, I would have all four of them. Today, the very same product from the very same company comes in 96 variants. Now that's even for me a challenge. If you look at the machinery that's behind that, that's some fascinating piece of equipment that is able to fill some 24,000 of those yogurts per hour. But in essence, it is dumb. It will do exactly how it was set up. So if we want to fill hazelnut yogurt and we have a chocolate packaging and chocolate label around that, the machine will do exactly that, and you will have hazelnut yogurt that looks from the outside like chocolate, or 24,000 of them per hour. Now, in the best case, and this area is detected before the product leaves the factory, it will create a quality cost, something that that industry very nicely calls product loss. It makes up to 8% of the value in food production, or some $15 billion annually. In the worst case, and this error is not detected, it may send a nut allergic consumer straight from supermarket to emergency room. Well, why does this happen? The machine is fast and it can sense, but there is no real connection between the two. And this would be different in the area of 4.0. Each physical product, whether it's the yogurt, the container, or the label, will have what we call the digital twin. That's their surrogate in the software world. Here it is where the machine will detect that nut and chocolate is a mismatch and will stop that process automatically. Now, yogurt is just one example, and food and beverage is just one industry. And this machine-to-machine -machine and machine-to-part communication is just one application. We looked at a multitude of such applications throughout all industries, and normally in engineering we fight very hard to improve an annual improvement of one to two percentage points. Here, we have the opportunity to make production 30% faster and 25% cheaper. That's a true leapfrog. So great for production. What fascinates me even more is the fact that you can basically re-innovate companies. This is a harbor crane. Its hand, its actuation is a motor. 
That's a beautiful piece of equipment that lifts a container as easily as you lift a pencil. A company I work with, let's call them Motors and More, manufactures these brilliant equipment, sells them to harbor operators for something like 5,000 euros a piece. Now, with the new technology, we added sensors to those motors and we built a software model. So basically, the idea is the motor can sense, and it can sense the real weight in real time of the container as we lift it, now, as opposed to the weight that it's in the paperwork and that might be just a little bit different. So basically, while lifting the container, it sends that data to a software model, which then builds a 3D model of the ship. Again, that's the digital twin of that ship. And it will tell the motor exactly where to place the next container in order to optimize the weight balancing of the ship. And with an optimized weight balancing, that ship can save up to $1,000 a day on fuel. That is some 5 to 8 percent gain in fuel efficiency. Uh, just by optimizing the shuffling of the container. I think that's quite a big impact just for a reshuffling of it. While bringing that technology to, into the market, we had an idea. What if, instead of selling that motor as an equipment, we charged a couple of cents for each weighing and trimming movement that we did? So the harbor would only pay if the crane is on duty. And for motors and more, it would mean that by charging a couple of cents, but a lot of them per year, they could make up as much as 1,000 euros per year. Definitely a much more profitable business model than the one we saw before. So for companies that know how to adjust to this digital world, that's great news. But you might say, great for production, great for companies. What about us? What about human labors? Are we just sitting there and watching as we lose our job to those smart machines? And the simple answer to that is, yes, there's certain mechanical work that will not be needed anymore. Think about moving stuff in a factory, checking are we filling hazelnut in a chocolate container. That is not needed anymore. Machines will do that automatically. If you look at an economy like Germany over the next 10 years, that means some 600,000 jobs will be gone. But there's more to that. With new technology, new business models, and new tasks emerge. Think about motors and more. They will need a lot of software programmers, data analysts, and 3D modelers. That will result in a gain of about one million new jobs in an economy like Germany. So net, we have a gain of 400,000 jobs. So you might say, wait a second. That might be interesting for the economy, but what if I didn't go to school and learn the right things, the software modeling, the likes? Will I be out of a job? Again, I have a different view on that. Today, your employer looks a lot at your education and your years of experience. But we can change that with technology. Think back about that helicopter stuck in Africa in a remote place. And think about what if you had an augmented reality glass on your head, connected to a central computer that would know everything and every detail about that machine. You could basically perform the repair action that is necessary because it would tell you, again, as an overlay of the real world, that's again the digital twin, where to place your tools, which parts to repair. And you could suddenly fix a helicopter as easy as a picture book. Now, I sometimes think of it as if my grandma, who used to be a farmer, could suddenly fix a helicopter, even if it's the first time she touches one. So overall, I'm really excited about this new opportunity and this new world of connected machinery and industry 4.0. Machines will not be able to do the work on their own. Interaction with humans will remain a critical success factor. Some of the low-skilled jobs that might disappear, they will be replaced by new-skilled jobs. Yet there is no firm answer yet on how this transition will to be, is to be managed. However, when I look back at the engineering friends we saw at the beginning, I'm sure that their curiosity and their creativity will lead us to new and better ways to master our business and personal lives. Thank you.